Hello everyone as well, in this video I'm going to be going over a number of things. Um, what I'm first going to start out with is going over a quick update for Bitcoin here on this 4 hour chart. Um, so far we've come back up to test this pretty important trend line, we've kind of been bumping our heads on ever since we made the 17.5 thousand bottom. Last two times we broke above and kind of snaked around it. Um, so at this point either, and I think if we start breaking back below 20,000, we are probably going to, that's probably going to act as an indicator that there's a pretty decent likelihood we're going to go lower than 17.5 or at least test that once more. Or perhaps if we do break back below 20,000, maybe we'll test this pink box right here at around like 19,000 as like some sort of a scare tactic to kind of like wash people out of the market. Um, if we are going to go lower, the first area that we should be expecting some stoppage or consolidation in should be around like 15 to 16,000. Um, and I'd say worst can it, worst, ugh, geez, worst case scenario um, would be going down to around 12,000. I don't think uh, 10,000 is too particularly likely. Um, I would have to say that these last two landslides that Bitcoin's had recently probably had a lot to do with the fact that Luna crashed Celsius. I mean, a lot of things is bad happened in the crypto market to really just kind of dampen it. Um, and I do think that it did perfectly break 20,000 just to kind of scare a lot of people out of the market, um, which obviously that's an important thing for whales or just people who have money and are greedy and want more money to do for people who are in more so in the retail. Um, but outside of that, the main thing that I'm going to be focusing on in this video um, is this harmonic uh, model that I put together the other day and then I'm going to apply it to various altcoins and just all the other analysis that I'm going to do in this video. Um, but essentially the basic idea of is that it, it's trying to convey very simple and just the fundamental ideas of price motive and uh, trading harmonics. Um, it's very similar to the already established um, harmonic trading in terms of like the bearish Gartleys or just the various like bear, uh, not bear, but the, the bat patterns, the butterfly patterns, all of those patterns that are typically um, measured by XABCD patterns and have specific pivot extensions with respect to Fibonacci retracements uh, in terms of how you identify them. But I've chosen to just kind of simplify it a little bit and denote um, price motive by its pattern formation in terms of slope orientation. So for example, if we have a symmetrical triangle, whether or not it's a bearish or bullish flag, um, it's going to have a negative, positive slope orientation, so the resistance is negative, the support is positive for channels, which would be the most simple form of price motive or price formation. Um, we have completely negative, completely neutral, and positive. Um, for this model, um, it's important to note that the M's are going to have a disproportionate likelihood for bullishness. Um, and the W's are going to have a disproportionate likelihood for bearishness. And that means once you, or if you are seeing a formed M, that there's a disproportionate likelihood that it's going to break towards the upside. And then the same thing for the W, seeing a formed W, disproportionate likelihood to break towards the downside. But again, I'm saying disproportionate for a reason, because patterns and trading harmonics are nothing but potentials. They don't give you certainties. They just point you towards something that might be more likely, but isn't going to be a certain outcome. Um, so realistically, the bottom, like the, 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 the fundamental rule you want to work off of is to not expect anything really to happen and expect either it's going to go to the upside or the downside. And a lot of times something that will actually help you figure that out more and uh, develop a more clear understanding on where a coin might be at and whether or not it's going to go up or down is also pairing this with indicators such as MACDs, or RSIs, stock RSIs, and just the other um, various derivative indicators um, that show other things about the uh, price chart that the price chart isn't telling you itself. Um, but something I do want to point out is, again, just to further point out the uh, the M and the W pattern are kind of, they're pretty much the same pattern. I um, mean, as you can see right here, and I use, I'm using Bitcoin to correlate this idea. So from December 2017 to March of 20, uh, 2021, Bitcoin formed this macro W you can see right here. And again, as I said, you see a form W should disproportionately necessitate a bearish breakdown. As we've seen, we are now getting to this point. We are seeing if we go back to this pivot point, you can see now that we are forming an M, so we should be breaking towards the downside. But again, that doesn't mean we're gonna go any lower because you also have to realize, oh man, that was an accident. Uh, so if you take this back here and you move it back to the, when we hit 28K, you can see we are still forming a same M and I get it, this M looks ugly. That it doesn't have to look beautiful, but the, the, you can obviously see, s still see that we're making an M right here. Um, so this is why I'm saying you need to be careful 
because it doesn't mean that it, this is going to be like the bottom at least into like this the next crazy all-time high um, so you kind of have to know a little bit more than just this chart but again it's just kind of pointing out the basics um, and this also again just points out that the W and the M are kind of just the same pattern because they just transition right into each other you see a form W it's going to then form an M to then bounce back into another W and then kind of just repeat that same circular like paradoxical cycle almost it's almost kind of like cause and effect because if you think about it cause and effect are the same thing because what caused your cause was somebody else's effect due to some other cause like it's just a paradoxical circle um, at the end of the day and again you can see that right here we have a W for our bottom then leads into a double top which looks like an M you find this bottom right here then it then transitions into this W you can see from this point you make a W right there um, so hopefully you can understand or you can pretty simply see what that means right there but outside of these patterns right here the other um, I would say the most important ones would be these right here so we have the megaphone or just an inverse flag and its orient slope orientation is just the opposite of a flag or a symmetrical triangle which would be positive negative um, we have a falling rising triangle negative negative positive positive and then we have our ascending descending triangles um, and I did intentionally put two arrows on here because I feel like these patterns really are like just completely 50 50 I think anything can happen with these uh, a lot of places you'll read the descending triangles are more likely to break towards the downside but they do have the potential to break towards the upside again like any of these patterns have the potential to break towards the upside or the downside no matter how bearish or bullish it may look I mean it's the market anything is going to happen I mean, it, it, the, re it's the reason why human psychology is such a if you, human psychology is so sporadic how do you expect to be able to pinpoint the market as exactly as you uh, may want to but you can still kind of figure it out to a degree um, that was really all that I mainly wanted to touch on on this I just wanted to kind of simply point out these patterns and briefly go over the idea of the M and the W pattern and how if you just kind of look at price movement in terms of just forming M's or W's that can really help you um, pinpoint uh, how a chart is forming over time. But the first coin that I'm going to go over is XYO. Um, seen a pretty nice jump recently. I think it was like 157%, 153% or so. And it finally broke out of this uh, about a year on nearly a year long triangle, falling triangle we've seen, which again is a negative negative um, right there. And you can see this purple line right here. So I actually, for the first time, I didn't know coin market cap had an all time XYO to USD chart. So this purple line you see on here is exactly what you see on here taken from this point to this first bottom we have this W right here um, and again it's timeline it's price aligned I mean this according to this this puts the price target upwards towards more just going towards like two dollars and like forty cents um, but again as I've been going over the Bitcoin chart clearly is also giving pretty much the same value but it's giving a range as well from like three to sixteen dollars and bear with me a uh, number of these charts are probably going to reload because I'm operating off of a Chromebook and I have like fifty million tabs on my computer loaded up so I apologize for how slow this is probably going to be at some points um, but again as I've been going over for XY on this XY out of Bitcoin chart it's giving the range of three to sixteen dollars so I mean realistically three to sixteen dollars is still the range but there is again this right here is uh I didn't know that was there and that also opens up and sheds a lot of new light on this analysis for me and this red pattern you see right here is I literally just traced as you can see this red line on here XYO to Bitcoin and then I just copied it over here on the weekly chart uh, for this USD and this pretty much also just gives the same thing just pushing three dollars maybe even up to sixteen dollars at the highest um, but even if it just goes to like two dollars and forty cents or like up towards three dollars that's still gonna make this one of the one of the better performing coins that's still like 50, 30, 36,000 percent from this point if it goes up to like yeah if it pushes like yeah up towards 40,000 percent even if it just p pushes like two dollars and fifty cents um, but I do think this is a uh, we've seen a lot of volume as you can see right here we're also as you can tell right here we got these two green volume candles which is good um, last time I got them was it was indicative of this double top now we're getting them for the first time again at this bottom so that's kind of just a pattern you can see here with these uh, vector or these volume candles um, that was really all that I wanted to go over for this chart again if we do go lower I don't really have it on here um, but we are sitting at the top of the overall bottom range according to the various Fibonacci retracements I've taken over here to the left that I've already gone over um, but 
I don't really think we're going to go or at least break back below any of the already bottoms that the market has set because personally I think the market's bottomed right now. Um, so again, the uh, same thing stays for XYO, just I'm anywhere from around like 3 to $16 sometime second half of next year. Okay, uh, for this, uh, let's see here, for this Bitcoin analysis, this is in a megaphone pattern. You can see with the positive negative. And I also drew these extra lines uh, just to see how it will look right here. And you can see, um, and either we're going to break up from here, assuming this is our bottom and this pie indicator has been right, or we're going to break down. Again, like I said, first area to watch out for is like 15 to 16,000. And if we break any lower than that, 12,000 is probably the next place that we're going to. Um, but this also, once you again draw these lines, so from here and down to this bottom right here, nicely just lined up with where we got the bounce right here. That doesn't really mean much, but obviously these are just random trend lines, but I, I find this stuff pretty cool. And also, again, you can see um, this also going down to 12,000 also lines up with this channel, this uh, support line we've had in this channel ever since we broke down, started breaking down from 69,000. And also, again, how we look right here currently is pretty much nearly exactly, not exactly, but very similar to how we look back here. This time it's just been a lot shorter, um, and we've had f a lot more momentum or volume, which is why I think the, the, this is probably the bottom we're probably going to reverse from here. But again, who knows? Um, so realistically right now we need to break this 236. We really need to start breaking around like, right here it's specifically like 24.2, but seeing a break above 25,000, confirming that domain and then breaking above it and then getting into this next range right here of this golden pocket um, you see on the right of this chart. Um, so this golden pocket right here and um, this is the whenever you take the retracement from the top to the bear market bottom this go this works if you go all the way back to the origin cycle which I'm going to go over here in a second but this golden pocket is the um, area that Bitcoin has basically what I call I, it's performed an M step into and then once it breaks out of it begins the parabolic movement as you can see right here you can see um, from this bottom we're stepping up it's stair stepping we're seeing we're gonna have some consolidation right here you can see how we're kinda just again it's an ugly M but we're making an M step into this golden pocket range break out of it and then we go parabolic and then you can see the uh, next iteration of the golden pocket range according to this fractal pattern um, which, assuming we're going to break up from here, um, as far as I'm concerned, according to Bitcoin structure and its phase cycling throughout its entire history, this should be the, uh, the most similar way it should break up. And according to that, it also puts it having this first major retracement right here in this second um, golden pocket range. So that's also just um, nice to see as well, assuming this is probably going to play out. It's just the fact that, uh, obviously, at the end of the day, this is all just crazy speculation, but when things are lining up like this, it just, it's kind of weird. At least for me, it's just kind of weird. Um, but to go over this golden pocket range, so for this origin cycle, which just starts out from when Bitcoin began, all the way to when it went to like $30, $32. Since this one's a little different, um, it's justified to take the entire retracement. So from this wick all the way up to the $32, you can see again right here from our bottom range, you'll see that our bottom range sets in from around this 0.064 to the 0.236 as I go on. But you can see we M step into this golden pocket range right here. Then we have our final parabolic break. Let's go to our next area right here. You can see after the $32 high, we have our bear market bottom and this 2 to 236 to this 0.064 range. You can see from this bottom, we M step we M step into this Goldilocks range right here, get to the top of it, and then we have our parabolic breakout, as you can see. We go to the 2015 bear market bottom right here. We'll see that we did nearly the exact same thing as well. Once we finally got done with this sideways movement, you can see we are doing the same kind of this M step movement, stair step, uh, like a stair step upwards until we find support on the top of this golden pocket, and then we have our parabolic move to the upside and then right here again you will see the same thing our bear market bottom in 20 uh, what well, doesn't necessarily work right here I mean you can technically think about it right here but if you look right here for this March crash given two bottoms technically happened right here see it happened in the same area you can see we just did the same like M step pattern into this golden pocket range found support right on the top of it and we had parabolic movement if you take a tracement right here to our bottom which is as I said I'm pretty sure this is personally this is the bottom 
given this is uh, the current phase we're in, this is phase one, two, we're, we should see a similar breakout as we did from this March crash because of um, how the phase cycling works. Um, so we'll get a breakout towards this golden pocket range, M step like this, and then we should see parabolic movement somewhere around the range of like, I'm gonna go all the way up to around 50, around 40 to $50,000 should mark the range where we, once we get there, that should be when we're getting close to seeing this parabolic movement up towards like highest I've been saying is 300,000, but I would say 230 to like 275,000 would be a more reasonable range. Um, and also all these again just line up with getting to this same oversold range every single time for all these bottoms again. I'll go back and show that. You can see we are maximally oversold right here. Same thing for this one back here. Didn't go quite as low. Um, over time the RSI is dipping lower and lower and the tops are going less high each time just further adheres to how bitcoins decaying over time um, but as for the next coin so for ethereum i'm going to kind of play a game with this one um i put every single type of triangle around here that i could that like uh, makes sense to put around here technically these are the same triangle but it's two ways to draw them these are both rising um triangles and right now we've seen a nice bounce as you can see along this trend line which lines up with this bottom back here um, but essentially, what you can see right here is, is we had right here a megaphone pattern that occurred. And this is what lines up with this formation we saw right here to finish off this bear run, or not the bear run, the bore run that happened and ended during 2018. Um, after that one, you see this movement right here. You can see, technically this one wasn't necessarily a zero top on the um, or not a zero top but a zero slope on the upper line the resistance line it did slowly form a negative one over time but it was you, know, you can kind of see it was kind of bumping its head on the same flat line for the most part and I kind of just did this to kind of show a case of purpose where you could actually see this type of pattern form out in a chart just to try to give as many examples as I could um, but once you have that happen you can see that you can break this down into an impulse wave right here to justify that entire bull run. Um, after we have that, it's a fifth. Uh, five, so we have an impulse wave. You can see we have an ABC right here, and then you can make that a little bit more complex into this right here. Once you start to watch it and see how it breaks out over time, you can see how we come down. We make an M, and we have a bullish breakout. And overall, again, this is a negative positive, so that would be more in line with the symmetrical triangle obviously it's not symmetrical but it's the slope orientation that it has according to that model and again that can be completely more simply broken down into just a w pattern a macro w pattern which then necessitates this breakdown we've seen so far um, which again is just this abc pattern pretty much right here um, and so we should according to this be expecting a bullish breakout towards the upside I um, mean again for ethereum that's going all the way up to um, it just depends on whether or not ethereum is going to end up uh, having a higher market value than Bitcoin at some point I mean if Bitcoin or if ethereum surpassing the market value of ethereum uh, Bitcoin is something that's going to happen then Bitcoin Jesus I can't I can't refer to the right cryptocurrency then ethereum is definitely or can definitely go up towards like a hundred thousand this cycle but if it's not going to pass Bitcoin, then it can only go to like 45,000. Um, and that's according to this right here. Again, we should have a similar movement to this uh, previous uh, impulse that we saw according to the phase cycling that we're in. Um, and that takes us all the way up to, I believe that takes us up towards around 50,000. I think it was like 5,300%. Yeah, it takes us up towards 50,000. So, I mean, according to that, um, it could go anywhere up to 50,000. Um, but as I said, if, I think once Ethereum starts to get past like 45,000, I think that's when the market value is going to be higher. But I think at least Ethereum is going to push to like a solid 25,000 um, this time around. Again, um, the time frame is uh, next year according to this. Um, and not, 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 I'm not saying any of this is going to happen. Again, everything is just potentials and possibilities. Who knows what's going to happen at the end of the day. But there are patterns and charts and sometimes they are actually accurate and they uh, have predictive power so there's no harm in actually looking um, but here for XRP I have this coin 
And again, it's just a uh, symmetrical triangle. Obviously, it doesn't look symmetrical, but that's uh, what it is in terms of its slope orientation of negative positive. This is the macro move we're getting right here, so we're pretty much getting a bull flag. Um, yeah, um, if anybody wants to tell me this doesn't look like a bull flag, I don't have a problem with you telling me that because it, it doesn't really look like one, but it, it's obviously going to perform bullish, and it's performing pretty much the same way a bull flag looks. It just looks really ugly. Um, there's also... Um, a cup and handle pattern here again if you don't think there's one here I don't have a problem with that because uh, it looks ugly and it doesn't really look like a lot of the things you see in examples um, but according to this we should get a breakout um, with respect to this cup and handle and according to the percent move this it should be upwards towards around 2000 percent so I mean it's really just barely going to break the previous all-time high According to that, it would only push like $5.20. Um, again, who knows, maybe XRP goes to $100 or over $100 this time around. Um, but that's uh, personally where I'm looking at for right now, if I'd be invested in this. Um, if it does go any lower, um, the next area to be looking out for would just be testing this bottom right here at around $0.11, cents, or maybe coming down just slightly above that to find some other support, maybe at around $0.18. Cents. If we break um, below that, then this box right here is... Uh, the next domain area that you're going to enter for XRP and that's anywhere from 13 cents all the way down to uh, almost one cent um, but I don't really think that's going to happen unless XRP is going to be one of the coins that die out over time um, next coin is Trias um, again this one's kind of similar to XRP we're getting that same kind of just bullish flag uh, symmetrical pattern with an M which is again as I said as a disproportionate likelihood to break towards the upside on here I have two, I have a falling wedge negative negative or a falling triangle and then I have a symmetrical negative positive triangle um, and these squigglies that you're going to see on some of these charts the ones that really don't have much price data is um, given um, that all these coins are falling along with Bitcoin um, and what I mean by that is if you were to, and I'm not really going to touch on it in this video because I've touched on it a lot of times in the past, um, if you would go back through all these altcoins and then compare it to Bitcoin, you'll start to see that the bottoms and the tops are occurring pretty much at the exact same time. Um, and you'll see that Bitcoin's pretty much kind of literally puppeteering the entire market. Um, and that means that if uh, Trias had to have been out like for the last like five years, Odds are it would have started out lower and slowly built up to actually form something like this because that's nearly what all the other altcoins did that were around long enough and that's what you can see right here for XRP. Um, so that's why that squiggles right here. Um, but if uh, Trias is going to go any lower, um, there's again there's not much price date on here so this, I mean we could just free for all down to 13 cents uh, is the lowest that uh, I see for respect to all these uh, retracements I could take. To, to this um, harmonic M pattern right here. Um, but in terms of the range that I'm looking for, uh, $200 to $400 is what this range is right here. Um, but again, in general, just always uh, the first place to expect would just be um, retesting the previous all-time highs, or if it's not even going to make a new all-time high, for example, maybe Trias is just going to come back up to this box, find its high with respect to this previous consolidation, that it just won't break through this time around and maybe ends up going lower. Um, but again, uh, $200 to $400 is the first uh, golden range in terms of the retracements you can take with respect to this price, this harmonic price formation so far. So that's what I'm using to justify that. Um, and again, it could just go back to $32, or it could just go to $10, who knows. Um, and again, all these have kind of this a similar timeline, just in general, second half of next year. Right now, my, I have a personal bias of maybe it's going to all happen within six to, six to nine months um, into next year. This coin right here is Jasmine. This one's again kind of dissimilar. It's, um, and you, you, a lot of you, if you're especially if you're new, you're probably realizing that I'm. I, my analysis probably seems very unorthodox or kind of like weird, maybe. Um, if so, it's probably because it is. And I'm calling this a flag, even though it's perf technically forming a descending uh, triangle. Um, but again, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, any pattern can break to the upside or the downside. I don't think any pattern has a 100% likelihood. I think everything is potentials. Um, so again, we're seeing squiggles because this one doesn't have much price action to lead up into this, basically this flag movement. Technically, this is all a massive ABCD pattern um, that we're seeing here from the March crash 
to the 65k high for Bitcoin down to where we have now at at six or 17.5 thousand, then up to the assumed high for Bitcoin at around 250 thousand. That would perform a macro ABCD pattern. That's kind of what you're seeing here. Um, so if Jasmine is going to break down from this, um, the next bubble to be looking out for, given we are literally going to go into a free fall mode. If he does, I would say to look down to 0 0.002. All the way down to 0 0.001, so lo less than a penny. Um, if uh, again, just if it's going to break towards the upside, first major area to look out for is just retesting the previous all-time highs, or maybe it's going to find a high within this range right here because it will not just it just for whatever reason, Jasmine's it's not going to break this uh, um, previous just consolidation this time around. Um, but if it does go to a new all-time high, my current range is just up towards $121 right now. Again. That means anywhere from three to 121 dollars. I'm not saying it's going to go to 121 dollars. I'm just saying this is the potentials according to uh, the model that I use to trade um, this coin right here. We have SHX again. We have this the similar squiggles you're seeing on here, leading up from our previous March bottom into our highs we've set. Now our current bottom for this C right here again. This macro ABCD that we're forming on nearly all the coins, including Bitcoin. For this one, we're having a flag in the form of a falling triangle, so a negative negative. If SHX is going to break down from this, um, we've already hit the top of our bottom range. Um, it, this goes down as low as 0 .00016. Um, so uh, hopefully that doesn't go that low. Um, I don't think it will because, again, I think the market's probably set its bottom in this time around. We've gotten pretty good volume bounce and just in general everything is looking quite nice right now. Um, again, just expect it to retest the previous all-time highs. That would be at around nearly two cents for this coin. Again, maybe it'll get lost in traction right here and it won't even set a new all-time high. Um, but according to my range for this one, I don't know if I actually set a specific range for this one, um, but I did draw the squiggle up to around nearly two dollars. Um, and that also lines up with going to the 2.618 area. So um, just in general, again, look out for the retest, the previous high, um, and just right now up towards around $2 is probably what I would see. And that's actually, how much of a percent move is that? That's, yeah, that's a 200,000 percent move. And actually, that's not crazy because I haven't gone over it yet, but there's a coin called Phantom that went 200,000 percent from March 2020 to November of 2021. So I don't, don't, I don't want to see anything in the comments about that being crazy because it's not. Um, this coin is going to be for Algo. Uh, so we wait for a lovely buffering to go through. I love having to wait through this too. I enjoy it so much. Um, this is probably out of all of these analysis that I did, I probably had the most fun putting this one together. Um, there's a lot of extrapolation on this chart, um, but I think it's, I don't think it's too crazy. It makes sense. Again, we have our squiggles. Um, according to uh, the previous cycle and how we form. So you can think about it um, for this one. We have our uh, previous high. Given The reason why I did this is because given that it's in a negative positive slope orientation, if you carry out the same slope according to this line, it's going to assume that the, the, there was a previous high. Again, I don't think price data even exists for Algo, however long back this is, which is probably like two years if I had to guess. I don't know. Um, but to first go over it, um, essentially, um, what we're seeing here, again, for almost all of these, is a uh, cup and handle pattern for the most part. Again, it does look ugly, but I don't really care. Um, according to this, uh, it should break out towards at least five dollars at most, um, up towards like eight, nine dollars. I'm still not sure whether or not the altcoins are going to take the movement with respect to the March crash bottom all the way up to March of 2021, March, April, May of 2021, or if it'll copy very self-similar to the same movement it did from the March crash to the November high. So if it goes to the November high, that means it would go to around like $8. If not, then like $5 that would line up with the following through with how it did to March, April, and May of 2021. Um, again, if we go any lower, I didn't put any boxes on here, but um, the next area that we could probably find some support on would probably be about right here at around like 17 cents. If that if we break through that somehow, um, nine cents would be the next area, and then obviously just any lower than that. But again, I don't really think uh, things are going to be going too drastically lower if anything does happen to go a little bit lower um, at this point. 
Um, but I, given that I did do this mainly, this is allowing me to extrapolate far out into the future. I extrapolated this out to the 2030s um, because right now, and I guess I should probably go over Bitcoin first before I do this. Um, but Bitcoin has certain phase cycling that I've gone over and that I've put together throughout studying Bitcoin in the market for the last two years. Um, and so we should get a similar movement to this right here. We have a W pattern you can see that we made from 20,000 to right here, 3,300 back to like uh, 12,000. You can see we moved all the way to our 65,000 high. Um, we're gonna get this self similar movement right here repeated. And then after we do this, we should see a movement similar to this right here, this kind of valley formation, which will be the, uh, I think it's the third, it's either the third or fourth iteration of phase three, which technically I haven't labeled phase two in here. It's either phase two or three, depending upon which model you're gonna look at it at. Um, but it's pretty much just gonna have a refractal repeatance uh, of this phase. So that's why I have algo looking like this after this breakdown, because assuming this is gonna be our high right here at $8, or if it's $5, we'll lose around upwards towards like 80 to 90 percent of the value which that should take us back down to this range right here as low as probably around a dollar or so if I had to guess and then from there um, according to everything that I've just looked into um, algo could very likely be pushing like 50 to 80 dollars by the end of this decade according to all of this so that's pretty f uh, that's pretty cool um, obviously that's pretty far out in the future so who knows if that's going to play out um, but again just look for algo to retest the previous um, all-time high. Um, at least that's like the first major area you're going to want to look out for. Again, maybe it doesn't even make it into all new all-time high and it gets lost and uh, lost in transition in this previous uh, consolidation we made right here. Um, but again, five to eight dollars is the range to be looking out for. At least what I'm seeing so far. Um, again, here we have Phantom. Uh, this is the one that I said moved like 200,000% the last time, so from March 2020 to March 2021. Um, this is a, this coin is actually supposed to be like an Ethereum competitor, so it's just supposed to be pretty efficient, pretty fast in terms of a blockchain and whatnot, things like that. Um, but this one I have in two separate triangles. Uh, this one's in a negative positive and a positive positive, so a rising triangle and a, uh, a uh, symmetrical triangle. Let me get rid of these RSIs. Um, so you can see that we're coming down. We're testing this right here. Our next box to come down to, if we're going to actually end up going lower, would be, and if we actually do lose this support right here, we pretty much have free fall all the way down until $0.05. Cents. So if I had to guess, if we're going to go any lower, $0.05 cents would be the next area to go to. Um, but I don't think that's too possible. Um, in terms of where this one is going, again, like I said, 200,000%. At most, it could move all the way up to right here, up towards like $400. But that's if you take the percent move up to November. And like I said, I'm not sure if these altcoins are going to factor that in. And I'm inclined to believe if they do factor that in, then they're going to top out like maybe two to two to three months after Bitcoin tops out because they're going to like overextend essentially. Um, and typically altcoins delay, so I mean that might actually end up making more sense at the end of the day. But either it's going to push up towards like $100 or towards like $400 according to whether or not it goes to this one right here or this one right here in terms of having um, self-similar um, price formation um, with respect to the entire market in general. But we're also getting, denoted by this M pattern right here, we're getting this nice M pattern right here. We came up from this bottom, we had a double top right here, and we're coming back down, we're finding very nice support on the same support back here for the same M pattern. So again, there's a nice disproportionate likelihood that we could be breaking out towards the upside. Um, and again, just look for a retest. According to this fractal pattern, there's a likelihood that it might retest the previous all-time high, and then have a consolidation period after that, or a retracement, and then consolidation, and then finally go back up from there. Um, but again, that's still quite a ways away. That would, If this plays out even at least similar, and that would happen towards the end of this year. Um, but I, was, I think that was about all that I wanted to touch on for this one. Right here we have Quantum. Again, this one's got a squiggle. Uh, this one's got a lot of triangles on it. For these last ones, I drew about as many triangles as I possibly could. Just to kind of show you, if you do do this, it can it gives you a nice idea of like all the poten uh, potential scenarios that could play out. Like, for example, let's say we're going to be super bullish, right? And we're just going to have this white parabolic breakout maybe quantum 
doesn't want to be quantum anymore and it just falls off the map or maybe we have just a tiny more downside and hit this trend line and then we bounce up from here this is like kind of the idea that I'm getting at like you literally don't know what's gonna happen like at all but you can have certainty at least some amount of certainty um, looking at like indicators and again like these pretty much these incommensurable and if you don't know what the word incommensurable means that it's kind of uh, disproportionate is another word for it um, but pretty much these incommensurable patterns that you get right here only give you um, potentials um, but according to this cup and handle right here and the fact from March crash to Bitcoin's high of 65k again just factoring all that in um, this one should move up towards like 5,000%. That takes it to around 95 to $120. Um, and again, I did extrapolate this one out kind of far too. Again, assuming this happens towards the second half of next year, uh, maybe six to nine months if I want to get a little specific about it. Again, we'll probably have like a 90% drop. That should take us down to, and it happens to nicely line up with falling right in line with these pretty important trend lines uh, that have been working out so far for these two bottoms so that's just pretty cool to see um, but perhaps quantum is going to be worth upwards towards four hundred dollars by the end of this decade um, so who knows about that and another thing that I did want to point out is is uh, the the uh, how pretty much why you can think about the uh, W and M pattern is like being like the the two like base patterns that all patterns are derived from essentially because so look at this right here. So you can see we come down and we're this, you can look at this right here pretty much as just a W. We made a double bottom um, and the way you can look at it as being a W is like this right here. You can see, you can put one right here, you can draw one in between this right here, do something like that. And that's why you can kind of look at it as a W, but you can see it forms an M right in the middle. But if you kind of just play around with this and you can actually see if you actually, let's say this middle point went lower. Hmm, that kind of looks like an inverse head and shoulders, doesn't it? So that's probably an interesting. Let's say this middle point went higher. Now it literally looks like a W, like I just showed you. So that right there hopefully easily conveys to you um, the uh, how the W and M are really like the base patterns that kind of uh, like are like the origin for all the other pattern formation. And then it's also the same thing for head and shoulders. So like right here, if you take this midpoint higher, you can see we have a head and shoulders pattern now. Um, if you take it lower, you can see now that we have an M, and once we get to this bottom, assuming this pivot point right here would be the bottom, this would be a bullish indicator to buy. Um, so there's that with that that I wanted to point out, specifically with that chart. So for this uh, coin here, we have waves, and there's just a bunch of triangles drawn in here. We have a cup and handle, which we're seeing on just about all the coins, because that's what Bitcoin's phase one looks like. Um, that's the W pattern that it made from 20,000 to 3,200 to 10,000 the 4,000 then the 65,000 um, again we are getting an M right here the entire market is signaling a bottom so I'm assuming this is gonna be our bottom for the same pattern so we should get a bullish breakout according to this pivot point to this pivot point we should get a self similar breakout and that takes it up to around 250 to 315 dollars or so um, I also extrapolated this one out assuming we'll get like a 90 percent drop downwards from that point over the span of like what does that go to like what four three to three to four years or so given that Bitcoin's decaying over time due to the logarithmic decay and these cycles are going to become longer and they're going to seem more brutal which they probably kind of, they kind of are more brutal because they're getting longer they're going to feel more brutal because you're going to think that it's just more bearish because of that um, but that nicely just lines up again we come down and we touch down on this trend line and we come down and touch down right on the top of this uh, this major support right here for these uh, tops we've seen so far um, but according this is going to play out at least somewhat similar we could look forward to ways being worth like upwards towards a thousand dollars by the end of this decade so that's pretty fun to see right there um, and again look out for it to first test the previous all-time high maybe it's gonna get lost in translation somewhere like in between that due to some previous consolidation or resistance that it doesn't want to break or maybe it's gonna go lower and find some support right here at two dollars and twenty three cents maybe it'll find some support right here at like eighty cents or maybe it goes down to nineteen cents I mean, anything could happen. If it wants to fall off the map and fall along with this black dotted trend line, we could come down as low as, like I said, down even lower than that, down to uh, nine cents. But I don't really think that's too likely. Um, so for here, for ZRX, again, we have two triangles on here. We are seeing our cup and handle pattern, where you're coming down to top of our bottom range. Which there's a lot of built-up consolidation right here, and a lot of support to find. So again, just in general, I think the bottom's already been set in for most of these coins. 
Um, the lowest we could go to still be safe would just be testing the previous bottom at like 12 cents. If we, for whatever reason, break through that, then it's free fall mode to who knows where. Um, again, just look for it to test the previous all time high back at like $2.34. Maybe it's going to test this resistance line right here to like $1.40, and this will be the high for this cycle. Um, but according to this cup and handle pattern, and then comparing it to Bitcoin and how it performed last time during the same bullish phase that we are still in, and we still have the last leg to perform, we should be looking upwards towards around 4 to $5 for this coin again sometime during the second half of next year. Um, um, I recently went over ADA, I think, in one of my previous videos, but I didn't go over this chart specifically. This one's just uh, one of the ones that's more extrapolated uh, out towards the end of this decade. Um, specifically, um, Cardano is in a macro, uh, what's the name of it? A falling, not a falling, a rising triangle. I think about a lot of things at once, so that's kind of why I forget things or seem to forget things here and there, so forgive me. Um, but we're seeing, again, this macro falling, or this, my bad, this rising triangle right here. Um, and according to this, again, I think the bottom is set in, so assuming reversal from up here, um, we could see Cardano top out anywhere from like 12 or I guess 13 to $55, as you can see right here. Again, second half of next year. If we come any lower, the next place to be looking out for for major support would be around like 16 cents all the way down to like 8 cents. Um, again, let's say, assuming we find this high, whether if it just goes to 13 or $55, um, if it goes to $55 and 90% draw down roughly from there it would take us down to this point right here which lines up with this trend line it only it does only touch this one bottom right here so it's not the strongest trend line but it nonetheless is a trend line to a degree um, we'll also find this uh, pretty important pivot point right here in the intersection of these two triangles so in these two gray triangles you see right here are two triangles that are um, overlapped on one another that are justified through specific trend lines on here um, but assuming we break down from there, um, we'll come down to around like four dollars or fifty cents or so. Um, if we don't even go up that high, odds are we'd probably come back down to test like even as low as like a dollar, maybe even like eighty cents or so. Um, but towards the end of this decade, according to all this, uh, I mean Cardano could be worth two hundred sixty-four to around five hundred and eighty-nine dollars again towards the end of this decade. And Cardano's one of the top three in the cryptocurrency, so I don't think this is crazy to think about um, whatsoever. Um, and then again, that would necessitate, you could pretty much just look at this as a one um, macro, pretty much 12 year long rising triangle um, that's gonna necessitate a approximate 90% dump after that because it's, uh, it's pretty much just how the bear markets work in the cryptocurrency space. Um, but I believe that was about all that I wanted to go over. Um, and touch on in this video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully I did a good a job of explaining this and hopefully it made sense to you and hopefully this is something um, that uh, you can actually utilize for um, for the good and perhaps making money off of it or not. Um, who knows what's going to happen at the end of the day. But hopefully you guys enjoyed and I hope you all have a blessed day.